Well, the second day of my little journey is over. The one I came to call the long ride. And boy, do I have a few things to tell you. Things took a turn for the worse, but more on that later. After sitting in a tram for over 24 hours, I realised just how beautiful my city is. It's breathtaking, full of old architecture, nice little parks, and a riverside panorama view few other cities can compare to. That morning, I actually took my very first toilet break. I don't know how I lasted that long, but let me tell you, the moment I went, it was heaven. The early hours of the day went by as usual. Once again, the tram was overcrowded, and a few times I noticed people staring at me angrily for not getting off my seat or at least moving my giant backpack. Well, tough luck. This row is my home for this entire entire week. Before you ask, yes, I specifically planned out where I would sit. Second tram car, third row from the back. The first interesting thing to happen that day was an encounter with an older man. He must have entered the tram between 9 and 10 in the morning. I only remember because I had just taken another short video for my friends and when I looked back up from the phone, there he was, sitting only a few rows ahead of me. It seemed almost as if he'd just appeared out of nowhere. Must have snuck in at the last stop, I reasoned. Strangely enough, he just sat there as the tram continued on to the end of the line station, and he remained seated as the tram turned around and went back the other way where it came from. I couldn't help but smile a bit. However, I was also a bit confused. Were there other people who did the same dumb thing I did? Just riding the tram back and forth for no reason? Well, who knows? Maybe he's just a bored old man with nothing to do. Maybe he just enjoys tram rides or the scenery. Or hell, maybe he just doesn't mind getting on the tram a bit earlier and taking a brief detour before reaching his destination. I tried to not be bothered by him, but whenever I looked up from my book, he was still there, going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, right along with me. As I munched on another sandwich and some crackers, I couldn't help but stare at the back of his head. It was about two in the afternoon and by now, he must have been on the tram for at least four hours. What the hell was he doing? I'm not going to lie, he was beginning to unnerve me a bit. A few minutes later, he got up and I breathed a sigh of relief, thinking he must be about to get off. Instead, he turned around, came right up to me, and took a seat. He turned his bald head towards me, and I noticed that something was wrong with him. His eyes, they looked glassy, almost hazy. The weirdest part, however was this guy's outfit. It just didn't fit. Not on his body, I mean, but it didn't fit in the 21st century. It reminded me of something I'd once seen in an old family photo album, a style popular multiple decades ago. Interesting to see someone here for as long as me. He finally said, I just stared at him, surprised by the gentle, well-meaning tone of his voice. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, I guess, a dare between friends, you know? 
to see how long I can last. Young people these days, he mused. But I suppose I sure did my share of stupid things back in my days. How come you're on so long yourself? Are you enjoying the ride? The scenery? He was quiet now, and for a few moments, he just stared outside, watching the city pass by. Well, you aren't wrong, young man. I've been on here for quite some time. Longer than I'd ever have guessed. But it's interesting to see things change. New lines, new stations. Feels like just yesterday that I rode on line 5 to the main station. What he just said made no sense. There was no line 5. Sure, there had been one but it was discontinued over two decades ago. Wasn't Line 5 discontinued? Uh, yes, you're right. But once you've been here for as long as me, you sometimes forget these types of things. What? What do you mean? How long have you been here? For some reason, I suddenly felt cold. Something didn't add up. Not just his hazy eyes or his outfit, but the things he said. Much too long, young man. That's just how it is for some of us. We can ride on and on, but we'll never reach our destination. What the hell's that supposed to mean? You should be careful, young man. This place, like any others, has its dangers. Especially for those who stay on for too long. He said, getting up now. I said nothing back. I could only watch as he walked on and entered the tram car ahead of me. Then, for only a single second, what I saw changed. It was only for the blink of an eye, but it made me cringe in terror and I felt myself break into a cold sweat. What had been a nicely dressed older man now appeared as a mangled, twisted corpse. Its upper body was caved in, almost torn apart. Its arms were dangling at its side, broken entirely. The worst, however, were this thing's legs. They were nothing but a mass of ground flesh and bone. Then it was over, and once again, I saw nothing but an old man. He turned to me, a well-knowing, sad look on his face, before he gave me a little nod, as if to say, be careful. Right at that moment, my phone vibrated, notifying me about a new message. I jerked and almost dropped it before I turned back towards the old man. Or rather, where he had been. He was gone now. I scanned the car ahead of me, then behind me, but I saw nothing. He had just vanished. I couldn't help but shiver. What the hell had just happened? I thought about the mangled, twisted version of him I had seen. The things he had talked about. Had I just been visited by a spirit? For the rest of the day, I couldn't stop thinking about him. In the afternoon, the tram filled up again, then emptied out again before the process repeated itself in the evening. As it turned late, I settled back into my seat put on some music and prepared myself for another couple of hours rest. Hopefully a few more than yesterday. As I sat there, I watched the few other late night passengers on the tram with me. In my mind, I gave them names and made up stories about them. Right there, a few seats ahead of me 
sat Jenny, a young woman in her mid-twenties who was on her way home after a late night shift at the nursing home. Further ahead sat old Rupert, a bachelor in his early sixties who'd just enjoyed a performance at the State Theatre along with a group of friends. It was strange, but I almost felt a connection with these people. As if they were my people. The citizens of Tremonia. A nation comprising of nothing but this one lone tram. Going back and forth forever. A few minutes later, a group of guys got on. Guys who were clearly drunk. They were a loud, rowdy bunch. Walking up and down the tram car and howling obscenities dangling from handrails like the idiots they were. Almost unconsciously, I felt myself drawn to them, and I couldn't help but watch. They were breaking the laws of Tremonia, I thought, and they would need to be punished. As I sat there, half nodding off, staring at them, I tried to come up with ideas on how Tremonia would handle crime and how those who committed them would be punished. I didn't realize that one of them had long noticed me staring at him. His expression was not normal, not one of mild curiosity. No, he looked pissed, or at least up for trouble. The fuck are you staring at, asshole? He called out to me. I jerked up in my seat, averting my eyes, but I could already hear them coming my way. Shit, now I'd done it. Yeah, bro, what's up? One of them blurted out as he sat down in front of me. I didn't say a thing, and instead, I just tried my best to ignore them. Hey, we're talking to you. His friend spat at me. Nothing. Just on my way home, I mumbled. Oh yeah, is that so? The one in front of me said in a sing-song kind of voice. I gave him another, yeah, and tried my best to stare out the window. This promptly landed me a slap against the back of the head. What the fuck are you- I couldn't even finish that sentence before one of them grabbed me by the throat, raising his fist. You think you can fuck with us, asshole? Right at that moment, the driver's voice could be heard via the intercom, telling them to knock it off. The guys stared at each other in surprise, but they didn't move, nor did they release me. A second announcement by the driver followed soon after. This one, more serious... He assured them that he was ready to stop the tram here and now and call the cops should they not back off immediately. Finally, I was released and after throwing me another set of insults, the three of them just walked away. A few stations later, they thankfully got off the tram for good, but not without sending me a few more angry glances. When we pulled into the end of the line station, a place where trams would occasionally power down during the late hours of the night, the driver approached me. Uh, hey there. Not to bother you, but I've noticed you've been on the tram for quite a while. What exactly are you up to? Well, I'm trying to get home, but... You've been trying to get home for the past five hours? Shit, he got me. Alright, no. To be honest, it's a bet, I started, giving him an embarrassed little laugh. He raised his eyebrows, waiting for me to continue. I told my friends I'd be able to stay on the tram for an entire week without getting off it. For a moment, he just stared at me. Then he furrowed his brow before he spoke again. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, he said, shaking his head. 
Yeah, it really is, I agreed. Well, it's not like I can kick you off for something like this. You got a ticket on you, right? Sure thing. Got myself a weekly pass, just for the long ride. Once more, he raised his eyebrows, and I quickly told him that that was the name I came up with for this thing. Well, it's dumb. Really friggin' dumb. But as long as you don't cause any trouble, that's it. Just try to stay clear of guys like the ones before. Sure thing, boss. With that, the conversation was over, and the driver went outside to have a smoke or two. About half an hour later, the tram started up again, and the ride continued. Well, that's day number two, guys. See you all tomorrow.